Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Wargroove, where today we have some side missions to take on. Uh, let's, uh, let's try this one. This looks like the, yeah, I was gonna say, this looks like the Palace of Heaven Song, so probably we're gonna play as the Heaven Song in here. Two old friends relive the happy days of their youth by murdering each other's troops, I bet. <laughs> it's been good to see you your again. Highness. And you, your majesty. It's been far too long. My time with you and Merciful was very precious to me. Oh, I miss him greatly. As do I. Do you remember when the three of us would train together? How could I forget? They were good times. I never quite matched up to you and the King, though. <laughs> That's not how I remember it. Perhaps we could spar again, for old time's sake. It would be an honor. It's weird how all of their sparring and training together has nothing to do with, like, <laughs> them actually exerting effort or... Go easy on me, your <laughs> highness. Nonsense. I know not to let my guard down around a seasoned commander like yourself. So... Is all of this stuff up here? Yeah, this is all ornamental. We're just... We have the units we have, and these are the ones we gotta win with. We have a thousand gold to work with, and a couple of alchemists to spend it with. So we just have to be very careful here. In particular, I'm worried about their knights. Hmm. What is the best thing to do? We have a couple of spears. Probably what I want to try to do is use the spears around the sides to discourage the knights coming around, or at least control where exactly the knights can come around. And then, you know, blockade the, uh, the bridges as best we can. I'm gonna try to get the archer into position to actually be able to kill people <laughs> relatively quickly. Yeah, this is gonna be tough, I think. Be tough to know exactly what the right thing to do is with this number of units on the field. I guess I'd rather stay a little bit more central. Alright. So they have more battle pups than we do, which is probably not a huge advantage for them. Battle pups are... Battle pups are good against a few of the units in this lineup, but I, I don't think they're like great in this composition as a whole. Alright, we have to not get baited. It would be very easy for me to do this. But the price for that is that my battle pup probably dies. Although... If we do that, we run this guy up to cover this end of the bridge and then move the archer up behind him. That means we have this area pretty locked down. Except that this knight is fast. But if he had to run around, he wouldn't be able to get to us. Three, four, five. Man. So if we... If the archer... Sorry. If our battle pup here got killed, their knight could run forward and hit the swords when we leave behind pretty hard and potentially leave the ground open for the alchemist to run into the swordsman's place and actually hit the archer. Ace, the knight's probably not going to kill the swordsman in one hit, though. Ooh, no, he totally might. Even with no other bonuses, just variants can get him there. Let's see, this is definitely a kill. Yeah, like, their knights are definitely the units I'm most concerned about. And we do not have the ability to get our spears up into fighting position just yet. So it could be that the right play is to back everybody up and let them sort of stretch themselves out. Let the fast units come forward faster than the slow units. Then again, they, sh they do show a real reluctance to actually move into engagement range. What does my wargroove do? Uses a tornado to move any enemy, any unit except an enemy commander. Okay, that's actually pretty useful. We definitely see some applications for that.
Yeah, I'm gonna back our battle pups off because as it stands now, they're not... I'm not gonna try to engage right now. So what we really want to do is leave exactly one unit in attack range for both of the knights. I want them to have a crit available because I suspect they might go for it. I might even just leave us right like this. I'm just kind of curious if they will run in because if they did run in to get their crits, that would put them in a terrible position and man oh man could I go for those knights being in a terrible position. It's going to make our lives so much easier. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I don't understand these moves at all. Just like moving the knights into positions where I get to attack them with spearmen for no reason. I've actually made kind of a, a lot of what I might consider to be extremely bad plays here. All right, well, I think we want to throw a spear shot here. This spearman doesn't quite have enough movement to get into position to crit, or to provide a crit. We can definitely do this. This bridge is the last place the three of us were all together. You, me, and Merciful. You had to return to Cherry Stone for the birth of the princess. <laughs> And now she's the yeah she knows. How time flies. We're all we're all aware of who the queen is. Sometimes I think that uh, Emric just gets confused. You know he just forgets what is common knowledge. Well, it's hard for me to imagine that critting this guy's face off is a bad move. They actually don't have their best retaliatory units in place. I mean. They have their flyers. Their flyers are going to be a huge pain. There's nothing I can do about that. They'll be able to shoot me with their archer. Their spearman is actually one space too far away. I think this is a pretty good move, actually. We're definitely making things way safer for our flyers. Yeah, I'm a little bummed out about this swordsman. Like, what I would really like to do is run this battle pup up to here and just try to, like, uh... Partially, this is trying to baffle their targeting. If we give them a couple of things to attack, maybe they won't all focus on the knight. And there's a pretty good chance that knight's just dead, right? The, uh... The flyers could both focus on him from opposite sides of the water, and then they can move the swordsman in. Like, they can definitely get him. I like how much they're going to have to commit to do it, though. That feels pretty good. Oh, right. I can't attack from the, uh... From over the wall. It does complicate that a little bit. And if I put a flyer right here, it gets killed by that alchemist. 100% for certain. Unless I can block the alchemist's approach, I guess? Hmm... Because all I'd have to do is put a unit right here. Like, if we actually manage to kill this thing, say I use the archer and the flyer, and then we just walk this swordsman around to here. The swordsman blocks for uh, for the guy. You will not do enough damage to kill the swordsman. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. I was kind of thinking, though, that I would love it if the archer could shoot at one of the flyers, because we do have to start getting them down. And they are not necessarily going to stand in positions where I can easily kill them with alchemists. We do want to throw a, an attack out with the commander as well, right? Because attacking charges Wargroove faster, I believe. Yeah, I'm just I'm having a little bit of trouble here just based on the number of options that we have available. All right, I'm going to move this guy up here. We are in fact going to use the archer to weaken the knight. If we can get through their knights, we're going to be in really good shape actually. 
So this is very likely lethal. And it doesn't expose me to a huge amount of retaliation. A cold wind blows. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. How do we want to set up for these flyers? I guess if they come forward to harass the knight, we want to have our uh, our alchemists in position to do some real damage. Put you on the bridge so you can block for people. Yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. Uh, you... You are definitely also trying to do some blocking. I think I am going to run the battle pup forward. If it draws some people down this way, then good, we're wasting their time. And if it doesn't draw anyone down this way and they ignore it, we can go after the archer with it. So we have to be pretty cautious with our flyers as long as that mage is still up. But I guess bringing them down to this side is pretty safe. Yeah, we still have to watch out for that guy coming down, but if we can bait him down to the side, we can at least work with that. It's not totally ideal, but we could work with it. And the question is just, what does this battle pup do? It's having it attack their battle pup doesn't feel great. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to do it like that. Keep our battle puff safe so he's still a threat to this side. Yep, they're going to go for the commander because they hate the commander. It's pretty reasonable. Okay, they get through our knight, but I think we uh, I think we got pretty good value out of him. Okay, so their, uh, their battle pups are in a position where they're actually able to get crits going, so we gotta be very cautious of that. Uh, we do get to kill both of their flyers this turn. Which I think is a thing that we very obviously want to do. It's gonna cost us something. But, like, there's, there's nothing that these mages could do that's more important than getting rid of these flyers, right? Because now they don't have any units that we don't get retaliation against. Wow, our, uh, our battle pups are not, not, remarkably not good against enemy archers. Yeah, this is almost certainly correct. So, uh, aerial dominance, now very much ours, which is actually giving us a lot of options up here. How much movement do you have? Is it six or f it's five? Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five... So we clear this knight out in some way, we can have one of the uh, harpies attack one of the dogs and the other harpy attack the other dog. We put ourselves in a pretty strong position here. This might be a good thing to commit our commander on, although I guess I don't want the commander standing in a negative two space. Yeah. Hmm. So you're not actually very good against the mage. Like, this almost certainly has to happen. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta hammer the archer down a little bit. Probably, yeah, you don't even move. You just weaken that guy. Here, I'd be vulnerable to the archers, but I wouldn't be critical. Although, yeah, this guy's gonna be able to move onto that beach. It might just be the case that one of the flyers attacks this knight and the other one attacks that dog. I think that's where we're at. Hmm, although a flyer coming up here to attack this dog is in crit range of that archer, which I do not care for. This 
do this and then... So we've got a lot of these units up here, too weak to actually fight. What do I want to do with you? We have to be very careful of the remaining alchemist if we stay down here. And you do... how much damage to flyers? 35 with a crit, probably like in the neighborhood of 50 to 60. It's pretty harsh. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. We can bait this arch. We can bait this archer into standing still and attacking here, and then we can uh, we can put a lot of forward pressure on it. Right, I think we're in a really good spot here. Emmerich does not have a lot of good support, and if either of our alchemists survive, then we have heals, and they're about to be. Okay, yeah, they're really committing to the one side. We have to watch out for the Spearman crit. Uh, this is not going to be any damage at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a huge advantage here. The Groove, still a practitioner of air magics. <laughs> Magic, Emmerich, is merely knowledge and technique. <laughs> My tornadoes allow me to reposition friends and foes alike on the battlefield. Hey, yeah, I have access to the Codex. I know what's up. So it seems like it only affects one unit. But like we could use it to push the spear somewhere and then have the have the spearman uh, crack down on this guy. Yeah, these spears are a problem. I think that's probably what we actually want to do here. Because I can't really attack. So rising wind, you over to here. Power of the tempest. A single unit reposition seems like maybe a little bit on the weak side for a war groove. It's certainly not bad. Hmm. How do we want to do this? Probably this is a pretty good move. I'm a little worried about the spears, obviously. Spears still pose a, uh, a danger to our remaining alchemist. So actually, how about this? We'll, we'll attack like this. It makes it harder for these guys to move in. I'd really like the archer to be able to move to here. I guess we don't get to shoot from there, even. No version of this where I get to shoot people. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now we're relatively safe from retaliation. I guess the answer, the, the question I'm trying to answer now is how much do I value keeping the alchemist in reserve so that I can use heals? And how much do I just want to commit really hard and um, kill stuff? I guess killing that archer is not a huge priority, given the uh, very low health. Let's go ahead and run this guy over to a little safer position. Yeah, I'll put our archer a little bit forward, since we know we have a heal available. Right, battle pups do not do huge damage to commanders. Oh, interesting. I was expecting them to group up on a flyer. It's like, they really don't have a lot of options left for dealing with our flyers. This is a pretty good attack. Oh, wow. It wasn't even lethal. Yep, Emmerich is in open retreat. Understandably so. So we do have to kill this guy at some point. Man, look at the cowardice on display here. So 
So now we can run you forward far enough to shoot at this dude for pretty good damage. And then they, aside from Emmerich, don't really have any units left that have enough health to fight. So I'm not going to be able to, uh, not actually going to be able to get the job done here. But the Alchemist is weak enough that it probably doesn't matter. Like, I can just run up to here. Drop that Spearman down so low that he may as well be completely out of health. We have a heal available for next turn. I'm gonna have our commander clean this guy up to avoid overcommitting and put, putting myself in, like, an actual danger situation. Uh, we probably ought to finish off Spearman. And I think we want to commit the Alchemist pretty deep here. And I know this is a little bit of a lame heal for 300 gold, but we're already not going to be able to use all of the money uh, that we have. Emmerich's totally screwed here. There's no way. No way he survives this. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I suppose that heal is an option. I don't know why... <laughs> I don't know why the AI thought that was going to work, but it's definitely an option. But it feels like they could just, like, scoop out here. Obviously, we don't want to just pick at Emmerich with flyers forever, but it's an okay thing to do for right now. <laughs> Alright, it seems like you could maybe just... No? Okay. Right, it would be reasonable to surrender in this situation. He's going to run over here and splatter my, uh, my poor Spearman. You could try to make a whole lot of different arguments about how they're just sparring or whatever. But, like, their ghosts come out. I think that that's indicative of something, right? Ugh, I keep forgetting that we can't go over the wall for some reason. Alright, so we're going to use the flyers to try to sort of block him in. There's not really a lot of incentive for me to move my own commander in. Like, obviously our, uh, our rating here is somewhat time-dependent, but also... I certainly don't want Emmerich to get the first shot on our commander, at the very least. Right, I think that probably does it. Yeah, that was not as, uh, <laughs> as difficult as I was afraid it was going to be when I saw how many units were all active at once. <laughs> I guess the AI handled it worse than I did. No less challenging than I expected. <laughs> and just as engaging as I remember. I only wish Merciful could have been here. How time flies. <laughs> you remember how he loved to murder commoners. You remember all those years ago. When you and Merci Merciful came for my coronation. My parents had died. I remember feeling so empty. You were kind, and you were stalwart, and you refused to let me abandon myself to despair. I never truly thanked you. It's too late to thank Merciful. I missed my you chance. You have my thanks. But at least I may tell you how very grateful I was. It was, and always will be, an honor. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad we could reminisce here in this setting. Apparently, we could have done that a little bit faster, the game feels. Alright, let's tackle this other side mission real quick. And a bashed Ryota tries to explain himself. Huh, did we turn into Sedge there? Is Sedge gonna be part of this? I guess he's probably been following us the whole time, right? May I speak with you? Did someone say something? 
Uh... Yeah, go ahead, Ryota. I wish to apologize. Please forgive me. I hope deeply that you, Nuru, can forgive my misguided prejudice. Maybe. Keep talking. I have only met one of your kind Sedge. before. A florid known as Sedge. What? Sedge? I'm nothing like that yes. creeper. I realize that now. How do you even know that jerk? <laughs> I met him several months ago. Oh, okay, this is going to be like a flashback. <laughs> Sedge just ran out of the forest by himself and stabbed a bunch of guys. It was really weird. Who goes there? Do you seek aid? <laughs> seek aid? <laughs> you are not in need? Yes. Oh, yes. Poor Sedge is in need. In need of a snack. Because leaf, leaf guy's got to eat, too, probably. <laughs> Sir, I, I don't understand. Poor pretty soldier boy can't see the wolves at his door. Step back. This is sovereign territory. I'm afraid you must leave. This guy's way more polite now than he was to us. Or I guess in the in the past than he was to us. You're afraid. How very sensible of you. Sage hungers. Yeah, what he said. Where are those delicious looking soldiers? It is a mistake to challenge the might of Heavensong. You will be defeated. Alright. Oh, I'm Sedge. Okay. We haven't really gotten to use Sedge. His, uh, his war groove seems, like, extremely powerful. Alright, well, we're definitely just gonna hire a slasher here, because we, we gotta get control of some buildings. This doesn't look like it's gonna be a terribly long mission, though. Just based on the, uh, the distances to be covered. Yeah, I guess let's grab this now. And here, I think it definitely makes more sense to grab the economic building. So do I want to just save this turn? Like, I don't, I don't know that I really want any of these units. I don't think it... Well, I was going to say I don't think it makes sense to buy a wagon yet. But actually, a wagon might not be a bad idea. A wagon helps us recruit, or helps us get some of these buildings a little bit faster. Okay, we're going to need a solution to that flyer. I don't know that we even necessarily need that barracks right now. Oh, here's my solution to that flyer. Yeah, man, they are, uh, they are hiring better units. <laughs> Much faster. Let's see, you can move just about anywhere out here. Man, maybe it's not even worth throwing him in the wagon. Maybe we just move the wagon back here and whatever we hire next turn gets in the wagon. Because he is able to advance quite a bit. Be careful not to just give myself over to the archer. Yeah, like, the end of the road is as far as he can safely move, and he can just walk there, so why not? I think maybe i just hire another one, because they're pretty good against everything we're seeing here. Except the knights, I suppose. Yeah. Let's hire one more. And Sedge probably doesn't want to move forward into archer range. Alright, let's see what this archer does. Hoping he commits a little bit deeper. Wow, yeah, they're able to buy a lot of gold worth of units every turn. Okay, well, they're definitely trying to bait me into doing something really stupid. It might work. I'm pretty baitable. We definitely want to get kills, right? Like, Sedge's whole deal is that his war groove is super powerful, but also it charges very slowly. Yeah. So we definitely want to get killing blows with Sedge wherever we can. We have a lot of health available to us. 
Why do you delight in such destruction? Says the guy who routinely kills dozens of people and also who definitely sent his people out for the purpose of dying for the cause. So I'm a little worried about putting the alchemist or putting the mage right up front. Because I do not want to get my mage hit by their commander. I guess we're going to have our other mage in position anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so actually their knight will totally be able to charge me if I go after the archer. That sucks a lot. Yeah, that's that's pretty crummy. I guess you could just get back over here and catch that guy. Yes, yeah, so this archer just gets the gets the hero crit. If I try to do anything about it, I lose an I lose a mage in a way where I don't really have to. But um Sedge is gonna get hit for a ton here. Yeah, because their commander has just enough range. So I get crit, I get hit, I get hit. Then this guy's in deep enough. Yeah, like this isn't terrible. I actually I probably want to leave both of my alchemists outside of crit range. Sedge is going to take a bunch of damage, he's going to have to fall back and heal. But we will have baited a bunch of their units into really vulnerable positions at the same time, so maybe it's okay. I'll cut you down! <laughs> yeah, alright, we got some reasonable counterattack damage here. Boy, this isn't... No, they're not going to do lethal. Yeah, the archer's not going to get the 30-plus damage that it would need, but it's going to be close. It got down to, like, 20%. Okay. So, all of our gold this turn goes to Healing Sedge. We, we know for sure that is happening. This needs to happen, so we don't have to worry about you anymore. I'm trying to figure out, like, does it matter where I stand when I do this? It's probably better for me to be up here. And then, like, do I want to... If I move to here and shoot at the knight, I actually do pretty significant damage. It doesn't help me that much to shoot at their commander. Yeah, I think I want to just shoot at the knight. This is... We're not going to have a ton of opportunities to deal a lot of damage to this guy right now. We're going to start depleting his health. I'm going to put the wagon in archer range. I'm going to drop the swordsman actually outside of archer, archer crit range. They do seem to go after wagons pretty hard sometimes, so maybe we can take advantage of that. And I think I'm going to hire a slasher here. This is We're going to need bodies. And, you know, we're going to be able to provide a crit for it. It's a shame our flying unit recruitment spot is so far away. But, like, we could pick up... Oh, yeah, that's excellent. Uh, we could pick up a couple of uh, harpies and just have them go straight to the stronghold. Okay, apparently this move was way more of a distraction than I figured it was going to be. Okay, that doesn't matter very much. For some reason they bought a ballista. They love ballistas, man. Okay. How do we want to deal with this knight? Well, I guess just depleting its health is really all we have. So we're going to take some damage doing it. But we got to burn through somehow.
Okay, we got pretty lucky there. So we can run the wagon off. And we definitely want to do this. Actually, do I want to just move Sedge over there and get a Swordsman crit instead? If I move, move Sedge onto the road, he's attackable by that dog. Like, I'm going to have a hard time making it so anything happens here other than either, like, Sedge getting attacked and losing health again, or Sedge moving in such a way that he doesn't get to participate in combat. And I think it's way too valuable to have him participate. Like, that's, that's really important. Uh, I really wish that we could set this up in such a way that Sedge was going to be able to actually get a killing blow. Because that really helped with his groove charge. Yeah. Alright, we'll do this. Run you out to here. Then we, like, move the wagon and have the other alchemist come in and hit the knight. And it's looking, uh, honestly, pretty grim for their hero. I'm going to move this to, like, here. Not too far away. I want it to be the case that they can still reach it. Basically. I want I want them to uh, to continue being distracted by it, if at all possible. Okay, so this could be a kill. Yeah, lethal was not too much of an upward variance there. I mean, he's low enough that he's basically dead. And then you can reinforce so effectively for so little, but I kind of kind of want to hire an archer this turn, if I'm being honest. Uh, hold on. Let me open up the codex here. Dogs do pretty bad damage to commanders, right? Of course, it's a Shiba Inu. Uh, yeah. You could just hire another Shaman. I mean, it's not great. No, I want the Shooter. So we're not going to heal you, at least not yet. Let's hire the Shooter, and then we'll, uh... We'll just leave this guy right here. Try to incentivize the commander to stay put and attack him. <laughs> they really want that wagon. Okay, interesting move. The commander ran into crit range for us there. Our alchemist is so low on health, and they still weren't able to pull the uh, pull the kill off there. That's got to be disappointing. Well, I'll tell you what, we are definitely not winning this via Stronghold damage. Uh, yep, absolutely guaranteed kill from almost full health. That's got to be getting us, yeah, pretty close. Pretty close to that war groove. So this seems like a bad play on his part. Mon, fingers crossed for that 20%. Ah, uh, well... I think we got very close to minimum damage there. I guess you can just kind of stay where you are. <laughs> okay, all of a sudden he's starting to look uh, pretty alone. So we definitely don't want to attack with this guy. It's a shame that there's no way for us to um, actually get a crit. Oh, no, there totally is. What am I thinking? I totally have enough movement for this, and it's probably worth doing, even though it hurts a lot. And then you can just, like, fall back and find a heal yourself. And move to here and throw a heal. Yeah, that's not terrible either. I guess healing the, um... I think the swordsman doesn't really accomplish anything. Now let's just let's just go ahead and reinforce. Almost back to full. And you are staying right where you are. And you are actually staying right where you are. And I don't know. I don't think we need to hire anything. This is looking pretty good for us, I think. Like, as in maybe we kill him next turn. Ah, he's oh, running. No Coward. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. Kind of wild that 
archer arrows can travel over the uh, over the tops of the walls when flying units can't. So his thing is that uh, that like blade dash, right? Yeah, okay. I still don't actually know how the targeting works. Yeah, I'm a little bummed out about all this cowardice. Definitely gonna hire a green guard. And I think we got him on the next turn, at least. But it's annoying that he ran away and made there have to be another turn. And he actually still has some distance he could travel. Still, I can't move... Oh, because that's not my... That's not my knight at all. Well, here, we can solve this problem. Trying to be in the spot that makes it least convenient for him to continue moving. Also, I don't think he really has good blade dash lines this way. Although I don't... Again, I don't actually know how the targeting on that works, or how like how long... The um, spaces that he can target are. I guess we'll probably learn something about it here. Draw your oh, no. final breath. <laughs> Just going for a normal punch on the wagon. Man, they sure hate wagons. Okay, well this has got to be it, right? You have the nice easy crit. This ought to do. My Empress. Yeah, I think that was uh, a very slight overcommit on their part. Well, my suspicion is that was a triple, uh, triple star. This pretty soldier boy was no match for Sedge. No. You have defeated these men, but Heaven Song will not fall to you. Yeah. Heaven Song. Sedge doesn't care about Heaven Song. Only these sweet and succulent soldiers. You're a monster. And that hiss is totally an affectation. He doesn't even do it all the time. Yes. A ravenous monster. And do you know the worst thing about ravenous monsters? <laughs> they always come back for seconds. <laughs> what a weird laugh. Meanwhile, in the present... Sorry, Ryota, that sounds horrible. Yeah, sounds like Sedge. <laughs> it was a crushing defeat by a villainous foe. Clearly the memory of it has marred my judgment. It made me really prone to flying off the handle for no reason. Well, Sedge can leave quite an impression. That was no reason for me to... I apologize without reservation. I won't let myself be so blinded again. Now I know you, I have nothing but the deepest respect for you, Hunter Nuru. You. And, and for you too, Queen Mercia. <laughs> okay, enough, yeah, enough with the mushy stuff. Dude's trying to hook up the weirdest threesome of all time. Yeah, that was like... It was weird that their commander was willing to run that far forward or uh, past the walls and everything. I don't think that was a very good play at all. Well... It's going to be a little bit of a short episode. I really don't think we have time for another whole mission, though. So I am just going to call it here for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I got to say, that's probably one of the episodes with the best stars to minute ratio, uh, probably since we started. So come back tomorrow for maybe some puzzle levels, maybe an advancement of the plot. Maybe we'll finally look at arcade mode. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see, and we'll see you then.